Um, the simple thing to notice is that there are certain words in the Quran which uh, are used uh, the same number of time as the contrasting word, uh, which again is a remarkable coincidence because if they were always occurred together, you say the word and it's opposite, the word and it's opposite, then they will be used the same number of times. But if in some chapters you say a word, and then in some other chapters you say the contrasting word, and then now you add up the words of the entire book, and you say, okay, how many times is that word used, and how many times is this contrasting word used, and you see that it's the same number of times, then that shows you that there is a, a plan here, and it, you, it makes you wonder, who was doing the counting? So we, we have, uh, for example, hot, uh, used four times in the Quran and cold also four times. You, you have man used 24 times, woman also 24 times. Uh, Satan and angels uh, are always contrasted in our own thinking and also in the Quran. We speak of angels and, and demons. Mm -hmm. it, it so uh, happens that if you count how many times Satan uh, is mentioned in the Quran, it is me mentioned uh, 68 times. And if you count how many times angels is mentioned, that's also 68 times. Uh, and, and that's if you take the, the bare words uh, by themselves. I mean, we can, we can take it to a deeper level of inquiry as well. From what we know about the history of the Quran, um, it, it does not seem that it happened this way by any human plan. The, the one human being who uh, would have had to plan this would have been the Prophet Muhammad and whom be peace. But from what we know as Muslims uh, uh, in our history, the Prophet, peace be upon him, went through a period of 23 years uh, commenting on situations as they arise and answering questions that were put to him by people, sometimes by his opponents. And the answers he gave and the comments that he made on various and changing circumstances, these are things that became now the contents of the Quran. They were collected uh, as his utterances and his um, uh, divinely inspired speeches. So if, if he were planning this, like he had the idea, I want to use hot and cold four times each, I want to use man and woman 24 times each, or at, at least an equal number of times regardless of, of how many specific is the number, uh, he would have to keep in his mind, how many times did I say hot to make sure he matches it with cold? How many times did I say man to match it with woman? Uh, how many times did I say Satan to match it with angels? And for him to have done this over the period of 23 years, I mean, with these few examples, possibly, but when you have like so many more examples, which uh, I still need to mention, uh, it seems rather uh, impossible to uh, pin this on the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So I mentioned that there are 68 and 68, if we just take the, the word ash shaitan in Arabic and al-malaika, uh, mm -hmm. Satan, angels. But uh, if we take all of the derivatives uh, of, of the same word, like we take the plurals, uh, and also in, you see in English when we say they're Satans, we're using two words. But in Arabic, it will be shayatinuhum, it's actually written as one word, a word plus its suffix. So if we take these words with all their plurals and suffixes, on the other side as well, angels with all of its suffixes and plurals, singular and plural, then we have on the one hand 88, and on the other hand also 88. So we have a perfect match if we take the words by themselves, and we have a perfect match also if we take the words with their suffixes and, and in all of their forms. So it's 68 and 68, the words by themselves, 88 and 88 with all of their suffixes and, and plurals and so on. Um, now, this life and the life hereafter is always contrasted in our own thinking and also in the Quran. Like people uh, should work for this life, uh, but also for the life hereafter and, and so on. We're always contrasting the two. Uh, it turns out that the word for this life uh, at dunya uh, occurs in the Quran 115 times. Uh, the word for the life hereafter, also al-akhirah, occurs in the Quran 115 times. Mm. So again, it seems rather difficult to think of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, planning all of this, and then he goes about reciting things on different occasions, and how does he keep track of how many times he's mentioned this life and how many times he's mentioned life hereafter.
Well, in, in my own uh, study, checking the concordances um, to, to locate the words, because it's so difficult to do it by yourself, if you're just working with the bare text to go through and find it by yourself. And the work of trying to find it itself shows that how difficult it is like to know this number, even to count them and to keep the right count. Sometimes you have to check and double check. So the question then remains, uh, who deserves credit for all of this? And uh, my answer would be that this is the hand of God that guided the Quran to come out like this. It's not done by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He was just a conduit. He was just reciting the Quran as it was being revealed to him. And here we see the results uh, showing that there is uh, the work of God behind the Quran to make it come out like this. Apart from the miraculous characteristic of the Qur'an, which we have looked into so far, it also has a mathematical miracle. An example of this is the numbers of repetitions of some words in the Qur'an. Some related words are surprisingly repeated the same number of times. Below are such words and the numbers of their repetitions in the Qur'an. The word day is repeated 365 times in singular form, while its plural and dual forms, days, together are repeated 30 times. The number of repetitions of the word moon is 12. The word punishment is repeated 117 times, while the expression forgiveness, which is one of the basic principles of the Quran, is repeated exactly twice as many times. The number of times the words world and hereafter are repeated is also the same, 115. The statement of seven heavens is repeated seven times. The creation of the heavens is also repeated seven times. The word faith, iman, without genitive, is repeated 25 times throughout the Qur'an, as is also the word infidelity, or covering over the truth, kufr. The word zakah is repeated 32 times, while the number of repetitions of the word blessing is also 32. The expression, the truly virtuous, is used six times, but libertine is used half as much, i.e. three times. Human being is used 65 times. The sum of the number of mentions of the stages of man's creation is the same. All that we have seen so far shows us an apparent fact. The Qur'an is such a book that all the news related in it has proved to be true and facts that no one could ever have known at that time were announced in its verses. Certainly this provides clear evidence that the Qur'an is not the word of man. The Qur'an is the word of God the originator of everything and the Almighty who encompasses everything with his knowledge. In a verse, God remarks on the Quran, if it had been from other than God, they would have found many inconsistencies in it. Not only are there no inconsistencies in the Quran, Every piece of information it contains reveals the miracle of this divine book more and more each day. What falls to man is to hold fast to this divine book revealed by God and receive it as his one and only guide. In one of the verses, God calls out to us, and this is a book we have sent down and blessed, so follow it and have fear of God, so that hopefully you will gain mercy.
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? He does not know how to read or write. So how is he giving the Qur'an to people? He's speaking it. He's speaking it. So the people who believed in him those 23 years, that were, they were with him, they did not see a book. If they thought of the Qur'an, you know what they thought of? Like the Prophet's face came in their head and his voice rung in their head. You understand? Like for them, they could not think of the Qur'an without thinking of the Prophet We can do that. When we think of the Qur'an, sometimes we don't think of the Prophet we just think of a book. For to them, the Prophet and the, the message and the Messenger were inseparable. The Qur'an comes down over 23 years, it's not been put in book form, it's not been put into a database, it hasn't been put into a search engine. Now it has. Now what the Prophet said has been put into a search engine, it's been put into a database, so you can actually do a search. How many times does the Qur'an say this word? You could do that? Could you do that back then? So now, after 23 years of this book, and centuries and centuries later, we have this book in book form. This book uses the word ad-dunya. You know what ad-dunya means? This world. This book uses the word this world 115 times. 115 times. What word is used? Ad-dunya. Did anybody know that back then? They had no idea. This book also uses al-akhirah. This life, ad-dunya, al-akhirah, the next life. It uses it 115 times. This book uses the word angels 88 times. Malaika, 88 times. It uses the word devils, shayateen, 88 times. The word life occurs 145 times in the entire Qur'an. Al-hayat, life. You want to take a guess what else comes in the Qur'an 145 times? Death. Death, the word death occurs in the Qur'an 145 times. The word good deeds, good deeds are mentioned 167 times. As-salihat, and a sayyad, bad deeds, 167 times. The word disbelief is mentioned 17 times. Belief is mentioned 17 times. Iblis is mentioned by name 11 times. Seeking refuge from Iblis is mentioned 11 times. They said, the phrase they said occurs 332 times. And the Quran says, say, 332 times. How is it possible that in, in like 23 years of revelation, he uses the word month only 12 times? Yeah. Days actually only use 365 times. There's just a few. Just word counts. Is that humanly possible? We just think about that. Is that humanly possible? Somebody speaks for 23 years, doesn't write any of it down, and these words seem to line up perfectly. Now there are some mathematical miracles of the Qur'an. <sighs> Throughout all the Qur'an, if you count some specific words, you will come across to, a very, to very meaningful results. I would like to give you some examples. For instance, if you count the word punishment in the Holy Qur'an, throughout the whole Qur'an it is repeated some 117 times. Whereas, the word forgive is repeated some 234 times inside the whole Quran. 234. If you multiply 117 by 2, you're going to have 234. It is very meaningful. Why? Because Quranic morality, Allah recommends, Allah orders believers, Allah orders Muslim, Muslims to forgive rather than punishing. It is very meaningful. Moreover, Allah orders to our Prophet, say, it is repeated some 332 times. And the response, they said, 
it is again equally repeated some 332 times. The words world and, and hereafter, they are repeated 115 times equally. Devil and angel, those two words are equally repeated some 88 times. Now, heaven and hell, those two words are equal, equally repeated 77 times. Zekah, zekah is an Arabic word, its translation is donation. The financial donation that a Muslim is supposed to give to poor. And it is repeated 32 times. And the barakah, the blessing that comes out of giving a donation to a poor, it is repeated 32 times. It is equally repeated. It is very meaningful again. Now, summer, hot, and winter cold, those words are equally repeated five times. And richness and poverty, those two words, it is very interesting. Rich, richness is repeated. 26 times, whereas the poverty is half of 26, which is 13. And woman and man, those are repeated equally 23 times. Well, do you know any idea what those numbers represent? Well, let me remind you, if you remember from the chromosome numbers of a human being, from the previous slides, a human body contains 46 different chromosomes. That comes the half of this 46, which is 23, comes from the father. And the other half, which is 23, comes from the mother. Whereas, you got the same repetition number for woman, woman and man. 23 and 23. If you add 23 to 23, you're going to have 46, which will give you the chromosome number of a human being. Now, finally, I would like to give you the meaning of land and sea. Land is repeated 13 times, whereas the word sea repeated 32 times. Well, at first sight, it doesn't seem to be very meaningful. However, if you do a simple math, you're going to have 13. If you add 32, you're going to have 45 as for the result. And the percentages, if you divide 13 to 45, you're going to have 28,88%. And 32 to 45, as for the word C, you're going to have 71,11%. Now, do you have any idea what those percentages represent? Well, I'll tell you, those numbers will give you the, all the lands all over the world on the earth occupies 28,88% of the whole earth. And all the seas, oceans, rivers, all the water occupies... 71,11% of the whole earth. Now again, these repetition numbers are very meaningful and it clearly represents us and gives us good scientific evidences that the Holy Quran is word of Allah. And it cannot be, definitely can't be a scripture of a man. This is not possible. So, for more information, I would highly recommend you to visit harunyahya.com. And in hariyahya.com, you will see that all the information about the miracles of the Quran, uh, of course, since we are limited of time, we could just put here like uh, 20, 30 of them. However, if you visit and read the miracles of the Quran, the word miracles of, uh, uh, the book miracles of the Quran from Hariyahya, you will see that there are more than 120, 130 different scientific evidences for the miracles of the Quran. And... All those informations are free, free to download, free to duplicate, free to distribute, and for your use for the cause of Islam. Thank you very much for listening. Please subscribe to our channel. Kindly like, share, and comment on our videos. If anyone benefits because of your like and share, then God may provide you with unlimited reward which is called Sadaqat al Jariyah in Islam. Sadaqat al Jariyah is continuous rewards received for good actions, deeds and spreading knowledge. It is a gift that not only benefits us in this life, but also benefits us and our loved ones in the hereafter. According to the Hadith of the Prophet peace be upon him narrated by Muslim. When a person dies all the deeds end except three. A continuing charity, beneficial knowledge and a child who prays for them.